Tom Murphy. He's a distinguished uh, research staff member at Oak Ridge National Lab and a graduate from UC Berkeley. He received his PhD here in 1988 in the field of mechanics uh, uh, of materials and structural dynamics from civil engineering. And I, I think it's just fascinating the breadth of stuff that <laughs> works on beyond what you expect civil engineering to do. <laughs> so that's, uh, at any rate, he's, he's a graduate from, from UC Berkeley. Since 1989, he's been working at Oak Ridge as a research scientist. Uh, there he has published over 170 technical reports and journal articles on subjects related to fatigue and fractured toughness evaluation of structural materials, neutron radiation and brilliant predictions for pressure vessel steels, the development of power reactor and test reactor databases for material, new reactor material aging research, spent nuclear fuel vibration reliability investigations, pipeline hydrogen and brittlement, uh, interfacial fracture toughness research for polymer composites, as well as weld uh, materials, cavitation damage simulation. I think that would relate primarily to the um, um, uh, target for the uh, exploration neutron source, uh, high temperature power transmission conductor connector system reliability investigations, and just a wide range of different materials problems. He's also going to be visiting with us tomorrow and uh, uh, seeing some of the research laboratories, meeting with students and uh, postdoctoral researchers and faculty. And we're still in the process of getting all of that arranged, but I think with this expertise, it's a real resource and opportunity, and I highly encourage, especially people who are working on the area of high temperature uh, heat exchangers and stuff, uh, to, to uh, uh, meet with them and to discuss the problems that we're trying to solve. And with that, I'll turn things over to John. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind of work and for doing stuff. And always very happy for me to come back to the campus. I just remember the hard working down in the past that you got and you accomplished later on. Uh, this is device actually we started the project five years ago. First when we started, the uh, sponsor is not very sincere once we go through science. Reason because spent fuel transportation is really not an issue. Most people assume that if you use a fuel reach 1%, there is no issue about anything related to spent fuel and damage to the transport. So the NRT gave us 300K, say, just break the fuel, kill me. But the suggestion is drop the fuel. And I say, it's not a sign. And the spent fuel is very expensive to process and very hard to get. Just a disposal fee, 10 cents, will probably cost $157. So, <laughs> so how much you can do? So uh, in the four or five years, we already convinced them they need to pump more money because this is the issue uh, back in the fuel cycle you need to be resolved uh, sooner, no later. But you know, how to do with the order? If you spend fuel pool no, almost full, dry cast and start initiated, put 25 years, maybe put 100 years. So the fuel eventually needs to be transported. But during the transport, what the consequence during the transport? Big question mark. And uh, this is what we bring some of the bad news, some of the good news as well. So we uh, open a new door for future research, young research like you, you want to dedicate part of your life to look into this, that'd be great. Yeah. This is a, this is a device that you can see is operating hot cell. This is the electromagnetic driver. I go away from hydraulic device because to contaminate the hot cell and require too high air. So, so, so far, very doable. We always testing over 100 million cycles, there's no issue. And this is a, a contact device directly, few what we in here. And we have a, a three prone LVDT direct part of the fuel. So you can measure in situ deformation. And a low transfer by two low cells reading the input push and pull. So directly you can know what, how much loading you apply to your view. This is going to be very informative speech. I want to talk a very basic concept. Why are we doing this? And what is it, uh, basically is what initiative driving this? And what is the core concept? And what methodology I choose based on limited budget? And 
currently we use semi empirical experimental and analytical approach. Lesson learned and the next critical step. So this is the most stage, the current stage of our life. Basically is the device called cycle integrate reverse opening to t-test. And the lesson learned basically is we are the first one that can test it, but it's a fuel we think. So what is fuel contribution to the class dimness? This first question sponsor want to know. And stress concentration. This is a side effect. When you have a fuel, but not a single fuel, it's a segment segment fuel pattern. You generate stress concentration. And how much stress con concentration to the impact on the lifetime? The second question. And then follow along basically with inherent material properties on aging history for the hydrogen content, so-called hydride in this case. And pallet like a bonding efficiency. In a high burn fuel, eventually the fuel, during the radiation creep and the swell, as well as we contact your fuel climate. And PWR and PWR are different. Pressure to water reactor for 2,500 PSI so they seems to be contact more. But the question is whether there's truly cohesion bonding or mechanical residual stress bonding. And the failure mechanism, we, we see it very clearly. Different fuel design, different pallet design, different radiation environment, all are different response failure mechanisms. Really, water in case by case study. You really hard to generalize. So, during initiative to be engaged, we found out a lot of our sponsors now pushing, not just one or three, pushing to point is the enduring limit you cannot break. But this is going to have to be depending on your sensor signal quality. Uh, we talk about more later. And uh, the other really very important issue is during the transportation, you're not always very smooth. Right. You something you bump into the road, bump across tile, those trending shock. But the trending shock to your overall performance. We found out this is actually a very important aspect. So this is our current understanding of the spending free fuel vibration characterization. Remember, spending free fuel is a composite structure, not single material. You have very complicated cladding to start with because in heavy radiation history. Then you have pallets, especially high burn of pallets. And this is, this is a really different issue. Until today, we don't really have a single quantified data what is aging fuel problem. And this spin off on this project is what we want to find out after we resolve interfacial bonding efficient issue. And Unique bonding condition, such as the interface bonding, your loading pattern profile, your spacer of grid, and the vibration, you have a different triangular move. And how those things affect the overall performance. And the vibration property. So what this word actually is, can be generated under what condition. So you, for example, NRT is try to provide a guideline. So uh, we need to justify the basic, this is a very difficult test. After this has been done, then we can migrate into fatigue lifetime. It can be reasonable fatigue. Yeah. And then we can control material. We can generate lifetime safety material. And trend and shock, this one will be our next critical step. I already created some data just by accident to convince our sponsors this we deserve a cheaper uh, attention. Siphoning implication. This siphoning, the uh, Bob mentioned siphoning actually for dry cast and fuel, also very critical. Think about it, the way the location, horizontal setup or vertical setup. And the, under the siphoning loading, a lot of times you have a high rate of printing shock. And that's sufficient. I've been showing, showing you some of my data. Even I doing that can project to the high rate loading. By the way, I want to clarify, everything I say here today is my personal opinion. It doesn't represent my sponsor or government uh, who is <laughs> That's a clear, you know. This is just a cartoon showing transportation in some degree of vibration. Yeah, this is what I did in my graduate school here, master degree, size and vibration. Then, basically on the Different condition, you have different frequency and strain level, time history, 
and you can generate accordingly stress strength curve, stress strength curve, S and curve, that will predict. Why we need to do this? Because uh, vibration is a given. Vibration induces anything that the mass during vibration, you have initial force. Initial force with the bonding condition will react. The reaction will generate stress to your system and need to be clarified under what condition the material will survive. This is the fuel assembly. Fuel Question, the uh, basket that these uh, spent fuel assemblies is in, are they supported a, a cantilever from the two ends? Uh, they do have a space of block in two ends, that's all. And that's, so, so it's a cantilever? It's a simple support thing. Simply supported cantilever beam. Yeah, they, they do have a spacer. Space is for the link and back in the between. You are 17 by 17, you are 15 by 15 assembly. Okay, so but a lot of aging fuel when you pull out the, the space of rock that you have a significant yeah. Is this just a, some of the drop required by NRT? You can see that everything inside the cast, you don't see it, this is a simple assembly. So you rely on additional simplified computational model to translate the cast for into the assembly. So this is a given here. Except until later on, if they put a sensor directly on the fuel rod, then you can do major maneuver. Right now, you can't. Because a lot of people like cannot supply the highly irradiated environment. Sensor to not supply very well. So, it's important. I come in, I break this problem into a very so called cheap flow problem. <coughs> you have random vibration, and you have fast flow transformation going to isolate harmonic waveform. Each one has an amplitude and duration. Then <coughs> the device I generate or can cycle under this loading. See how many times I break the sample. So you know this at this frequency, at this target loading, how long this needs to cycle. So basically, accordingly, you can generate your fatigue prediction. It's a very simple concept. But then, really, actually, after the basis concept, I propose a bigger picture because I really rely on the field data. I also rely on initial frequency on the structure itself. So this is basically a finite element approach. This is basically um, uh, a lot of uh, field data interpretation. So the two work together, gain the structure response, then I can understand what is the element stress level on the field. Based on, I will input into my device to find out fatigue light. And finally, we can evaluate the remaining light. So this is just a more complicated structure. When the vibration you decouple into a, uh, a period harmonic uh, base loading and each amplitude you can select first 10 amplitude to run your test and you can do accumulated damage. I don't need that's not going to detail, this is not what it's today talk. Did this you way. also you showed schematic with trucks, but what about rail transport? Yeah, it's same category, yeah. For the different the truck and the rail very different on the response. Trust more soft. The shock position, the rail will have a higher shock, more rigid. <laughs> so that's each one of the different Okay, this is just a, how we change the particular lifetime condition. And this is a process, you know, <coughs> any uh, textbook will be very heavy. So this is diagram showing our target is this. How would we reach it? We need to break down into different workable conditions. Uh, Pure of property, this is really hard to get. We really found out very difficult to get any fuel property, property, special vendor. They do not want to share, so we need to do our own test. But in the hostel, it's very costly. The hostel, uh, one day you don't do anything, then other not. Technician, uh, when you, you refer the space, they need to send it to technician <laughs> and tell specific, so money going down very quickly. Um, so the, the material history is what I can process through the so-called baseline material property, clad hydride property, there's a lot of literature information provided. And the, the environmental loading actually is very difficult. The road conditions are very different. What burnout are these fuel? Because it's about 40 to 75, high burnout. And you're sure that contact is with fuel colliding? We cut, we cut open, we show it's on patient. Uh, a lot of questions people before they don't they do not allow me to cut it. <laughs> so uh, PWR I did it 
PWR, I have a question. So pick a large PWR, you can share. I don't know. I don't know yet. I'm going to, to cut a few of to see if I'm done. Because if it, no contact is made, then the two are separate. That's, that's correct. The, the that's isolated correct. response. Yeah. Mechanical response. Absolutely right. Yeah. Okay, this will give you some example. Even on the one single fuel rod, depending on where you locate you use, you take your sample, the response is very different. For example, on top level, basically higher temperature. Okay. Uh, the PWR, this big thing I'm here, limit us myself to PWR environment. Depending on fuel type, flight type, fuel dimension, and the pallet length. We find a pallet length have a lot to do with the damage mechanism. And burn up level, hydrating, and mechanical interaction, such as here, the both end have a, especially the bottom one, have very high constraint. So in the middle one, we call it a high burn up level. Uh, I pass on the 8.8 .8 newton meters loading, hard loading, and survive after even greater than one 11 million cycle. So no way you can have a transportation from the U.S. across the continent reach 11 million cycle. So from this perspective, fuel is okay. But you look at here, this higher temperature than in high, more hydro. Okay. This one less than 300. Southern cycle the fail. And this one down here uh, have a low irradiation dose and a slightly cool temperature and have two million cycles of fail. So your bonding condition, your service environment, you can strength all the fact your, your material performance. 300 K is not temperature, right? No, it's cycle. Cycle. Yeah. Well, I use reversible cycle, like a regular mm -hmm. hydration cord. Yeah, not tension, tension, no tension. It's tension, compression, tension, compression. So what is the frequency of those cycles? Uh, this is the five hertz. The reason I take five hertz, uh, you can test one to ten hertz. The current, the hospital one hertz take to more. Think about ten five. Your body already got three more single tests. So, so. How much greater are these than what you would expect in an actual transport, say, halfway across the continent? Okay, so depending on what kind of row you choose. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the order of magnitude? Are these uh, a factor they're, of they're, two? They're, they're very different. Rail, first mention, rail and the truck are very different walking. No, no, what, say for the truck? Truck itself, really, truck vibration is, I put it this way, truck has experienced some low intensity shock. But the radio vibration is very, the tire bounce quite a bit. So the, the vibration amplitude is higher than threatening rail. So the impact energy experienced by the rock will be different. So I, I, I cannot really answer the question in very precisely. <coughs> okay, this is just a, this is a cast, current cast design in Idaho. They have the, the rail and they have the time down anchor and most A, B, they sense nothing inside. So you need to trigger, trigger down just the computer, computation tool and uh, generate super structure element to so move back into the field, not easy tech. PNN are doing this test for We have five consortium working. That holds right. one fuel assembly that can? No, this is many fuel assemblies. Many? Yeah. Depend, the test design not really final that yet. And the, the issue I see in here is because the spent fuel transport is not really an issue or question in the past. So the how you design a cast, like just become a container, not really a vessel to mitigate the load transfer, transfer from the truck or back or the rail track into a fuel extension. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we open a, a door for newcomers to try to redesign us the Cadillac into the Pinto for fuel transport. Okay, and this is tell you what it looks like. Each one cell is one fuel assembly, 17 by 17 or 15 by 15. Yeah. The reason they choose such a large quantity because vendor pre preference. They want it. 
They want to make it easy for them to store. If you have a two meter needle container, costs go up. But this has a limit. You cannot over your real limit or top limit. So, and this is a, a basket. And this is fuel assembly insert. So all this, we use a very large supercomputer to calculate. You remember, all have a pallet inside. And the interaction amount itself is tremendous. This should give you some initial mode. Okay. This one actually getting my attention first. This is torsion mode. Reason because in the in the best container you don't have constraint preventing locking. And I found out this one is the most damaged, most severe mode. This traction mode basically the, the, if a few of them are moving the the most the pain in your basketball. So they have certain limit, but the, the, the impact loading here when they bend the wall can be very large. And this is a, um, from the called a, a rock flash deformation. You can see like a bird caging, you know, under nature frequency can reach a certain frequency the resonant. And this is the same way here. They don't resonant don't need a very large load. When you touch their nature frequency in sync, they just start in sync. It seems that this is, these are spans of about half a meter to a meter. This is 12, yeah, this is a six spacer here. It's 12 feet long. This okay. fuel assembly. So what's the typical resonant frequency for that uh, fuel rod with that span? I don't have the data for that yet. We have a uh, spatiated frame <laughs> operation. Yeah, it's just, it's just amazing because large structure, you have a hundred of the nature frequency. But not everyone can generate large impact energy. The amplitude is very small. But if you hit it like this, at what frequency does it break? Okay, you need to divide the impulse loading into the series time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You choose the largest one, large one amplitude. You know, make yeah, you typically, I think it would go um, <laughs> <laughs> you get 10 hertz or something? No, uh, no, no. That's what the musicians are Okay, <laughs> remember. When you you doing this, you probably have a less than five minutes second. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So five minutes and you have step function. You need to decouple that. Sure, I understand. Yeah. So there is called a post timing. If sharply interesting now I found out. Not right at the point you hit. Mm -hmm. After yeah. the shock the, there, the 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 yeah, from there. Much more damage is afterwards. Just a nice question. I don't know if you've got a thermal problem or a criticality issue here, but why couldn't you mitigate this by basically packing the canister with something that would be like a high-tech ski boot foam yeah, or so sand or pellets or something? We are pushing them to it, but they don't want They don't budge. I can tell you why. In early design, for camp design, you're able to retrieve the fuel when you reach your target, reach your destination. But right now, all the vendors are weld them to weld the cast. Where the car? But telling me they don't want to open. Yeah, yeah. Eleven shutdown sites now, most of which no longer have spent fuel pools and therefore have no capability to open the cast without a really expensive solution being put it up. So it, it, practically speaking, yeah. if you can't ship these things, it's a real problem mm -hmm. for those shutdown yeah. sites. This will be future guaranteed. You don't have any option. You don't want it if, when the fuel goes to the target area. You cannot even open it, retrieve the fuel. Don't be embarrassed. Why is the NRC interested in this problem since they don't have any uh, repository? repository. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the NRC just released the uh, Yaka Mountain report a month ago. Okay, this is an indication. Somewhere politically, have solution there. It's not <laughs> the administration's. Well, I know, yeah, I know. But at the time, you always win. Give them time. People learn. Yeah. So the NRC finished the Yucca Mountain? Uh, uh, well, there's no consensus there, but at least they released the report. Okay. Okay. This just give you, I always enjoy early reports reason because they're very precise, tell you what they do, every single step, severely. But new report you don't see because they just cite other reports. So I take this one, 1982, 
they're, they're, they have this truck right from Chicago all the way to Albuquerque. And it's recording all the information. The conclusion is peak normal vibration is for real to the 0.5 G. But the shock region probably is about, say, 1 to 10 G range. So power spectrum density actually, for me, I can use this information to do some long-term care. And this is the reason the company maybe uh, they have their test field. Basically, this is about, they are showing about 4.5 G, so not too far apart. But remember, their trail, they are tracking much, much better than what it can be at use early. So depending on which track you use, information will be different. This was done on fuel assemblies? Not on fuel assembly, dummy fuel. Dummy fuel. Nobody fuel, tend for any fuel. But in the shape of a fuel right, assembly. Right, fuel assembly, right, 15 by 15, mm -hmm. 7 by 10. Because the last state wouldn't allow you to pass the, the state line. And if it's a dummy fuel, there's no fuel clad in contact. They put a, a surrogate rod in there, sometimes either lead or aluminum into it. To make sure the mass is similar, because you, you really put the grass or inertia. But did they, how, how did they get uh, firm contact between fuel and cladding surfaces? It's not. It's just a big basic by the, for example, they choose the lead. The lead are relatively soft, but have a high density. So lead, the lead in the gap. The gap, I don't believe anybody cared about gap at that time. They just insert a rod in there to make sure the mass is compatible with one transport mass. Oh. Yeah, we learned a lot. Okay, today I present this. It's, it's really, uh, in, the, in the past, nobody cared. So we're lucky able to work on it. So, yeah. And I also want to thank you I forgot to mention, the sponsor of NRC is really very kind, continue supporting this activity, and DOE later on shipping more so, uh, and most an analytical part of the fund by DOE, ten part by NRC. Yeah, this is a basic you say, based on those environmental input, load input, the maximum loading on those loading conditions is 8.8 newton meter at the moment. So this, remember, this is where we want to aim our test. This is a discussion, again, here. Now we have a plan, now we have a view. What, how they're interact? And Tom mentioned the, the interface funding. That's has really become very critical. And so, indeed, the fuel provides support. You can test any rock with a fuel. The bending moment resistance is very low, but you put fuel in there, the resistance goes up significantly. And pallet with sufficient bump to clap can also carry shear with this the keyboard. Without shear transfer between the clad and the fuel, the two would not act together. We would be separate. Mm -hmm. yeah. And fuel internal support to clap reduce clad local bump. It's very important to intestine. You want to avoid the complication of local bump. The how you hold it. Fuel in there help you to make it. And the rod system pressure toughness provided direct agent to damaging the pressure toughness. I cannot emphasize enough. We do not have enough pressure toughness data for spent fuel, for cladding structure, for tubing structure. So new thinking, new approach need to even plug in. For the, for the fuel internal support, what about the vision product gas plug on the top, which is empty? Does that behave differently? Or is it too short to map? We haven't get there. Yeah, you have to right. Material, the, where is the gap? Major impact for the liability because all the supporting loading go support by clad only. You have a threat on the patient by the discontinuity of the patient by the And in trend and shock, we found out the cumulative damage between trend and shock and normal con transport condition are uh, very critical. I have experimented it. Uh, I will tell you the story here. And torsion loading, more do, do it this under normal transport, there's water mix mode, remember mix mode, 
the adaptation and flight tension to the mixed mode. Dr. Gallus from PNNL in 1998 used very complicated compact tension structure, com compact tension spectrum, and very complicated grid. He proved at a critical angle, mode one, part mode three, the pressure toughness dropped to 50% in mode one alone. A piece of paper I can demonstrate. A piece of paper, very strong. It's mode one. Tearing mode three is very easy. If you have material condition loading, so mode one, part mode three, nobody talk about it. In show instruction, tube instruction, you just think about it. You always have all the plant loading. Steve Jammer tubing, you have U-band, two leg moving, you have a torque and tension. And those things, you just, uh, you, uh, testing limitation is one uh, major reason. Not many laboratories have a torsion device. Okay. I will talk about a little bit here. When you know from a little kid, we twist a piece of chalk. What happens? You generate spiral notch. The, the spiral surface when it break. This is called principal ten time cap. Look at this, it's a spent fuel. This is real fuel from HP Robinson. The fuel pad is very short, 0.237 inch. And uh, we found out pallet length do matter. Longer pallet length and higher thickness. And it's shorter depth than the bending more easily. But this is a lot more. So this is really interesting. But here, see there's contact. So our concept is we believe this point here not much too much cohesion bond. A lot of PWR is pressure residual stress, climbing residual stress. So when you try to torque them, this fuel doesn't really support, you bend in the fuel with support. When you torque them, you only look we only sustain it by climb. And if, you, if you take high burn up fuel which has bonded the fuel in the cladding yeah. because of expansion fuel swelling. That's right. But then when you cool it down, does it split open that that bond, fuel cladding bond? I will show you a picture. I mean You are ahead of you're ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The thermal cycle crack. Yeah. Okay. You do. So the initial bonding by fusion gas deposition really not much effort left. Okay, basically here showing you the crack propagation for the tubing structure, the crack. And this is the, uh, the drain port, I found this spiral plant, I was a basinate. So I did put a picture here. Demonstrate this is the crack propagation direction. It's a crack from. <coughs> So this is a model I sample. So this is, you can see, just imagine this is a hollow. You crack, when you're doing a pure torsion, the maximum stress on the surface. So you do not have side effect. Most of the pressure top of one concern is side effect. But a pure shear does not have such an issue. What's malite? Is that a little bit of A little bit of This one don't even have pre-crack, very shallow, shallow notch. Okay, so the, our, my observation is basically the impact of a torsional failure mode to spend your free fuel pallet dislocation need to be avoided at any cost. Reason. When you break a, you, you break a fuel, then we collect the fuel particle, no more than 0.1 gram at most. The whole pallet has a pallet in the day. The weakest thing is a pallet in the day. But if you try to, to spiral the, you actually peel the skin of the clap. So more fuel can come out, like banana skin, pure. So more fuel will come out, you know, when you reach a critical mass, and then you have problems. So basically, all of this is just, we need to avoid the torsion of the by all means. Because the clap is very thin shell. When you peel the skin, the fuel wouldn't be able to sustain. But if you have a bending, if the residuals are right, the fuel will not come off. You have a few particles less than very minus. Yeah. How mechanically are you applying a torsion load 
we haven't done anything. We, we haven't done anything there. Because, because I'm, uh, it seems to me that the grid spacers are not designed to be capable of, of applying a torsion load. They no. just provide the axial so for, You have to put it visually. You, need to know. you do not have a single board board. You have a three dimensional big board. So you combine flash tension, combine rotation torsion. Torsion basic by all the plan loaded. You don't need a physical retort. Yeah, torsion and flexion. Flexion yes. is just bending. Right, yeah, correct. But if, if your supports on the two cannot apply a, tor a, a torsion moment, then, this can, can, then how does one generate torsion in the same on shear? You do remember, you're holding any sample, as long as you have a shear. If you don't have a shear, nothing there, you will take free. Okay. But you always have a shear. Oh, and then yeah, under shear loading, then you can also apply yeah, torsion. Yeah, exactly. Okay. 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 And so at here, I bring in another question here. How much do we really know the interaction between your cat, your fuel, your, your track, railroad track? In railroad track, the cat design really, it's about time for us to redesign our cat. Your cat is not a dumpster. Cats should be a good container and mitigate the load transfer from the environment to the fuel. Then we don't have any fuel problem. But if you don't want to spend money to research on your cat design, you assume just dump them in and well sealed, bury it. Yeah. Don't even need this research. Okay, so can affect the fuel assembly dynamic response and they <coughs> can't take shock impact. Fuel spacer, fuel spacer members here provide a linking mechanism between the fuel assembly. But now a single fuel will be in sync. When they're not in sync, the interaction transfer. So you call magnification of the loading compound. Storage cat orientation. You have vertical orientation, horizontal orientation, all different response. Remember, all the load, truck, highway, rail are then on top of soil. So you have different thickness depending on your season. Warm, cold, rainy, you all interact. So you really, this problem is a big, big problem. Not just single professional can resolve. But, but those big dry casks, except the Diablo Canyon, and everywhere else in the country, they're not bolted down. They're not bolted down. And that means that the transfer function during an earthquake, when they're sitting there, is very different than if they were bolted down. Very different. Absolutely. We have a lot of interaction, but it's not bolted down. Interaction is kind of shock. Yeah. Okay, this is what is horizontal. This is the edge from Germany. They did in house in the like US. We put them open to me. Open field. So German, it, it all did very well how to maintain this. This is a very good thing. So they are corresponding vibration integrity under the high rate seismic trending shock. So they need to be evaluated. Now this is not in transport. This is in dry, dry, dry storage. Dry storage. Where they are just vertical. Sit, sit there. Not just a schematic diagram showing you. there's a pallet, pallet, there's the interface, and the yonder the bending you have the no active normal stress, tension compression, one side with compression, one side with tension, and the shear stress, normally the one order magnitude less than the tension. And this is, most of you right now have an end dishing to avoid bambooing effect, so those so really you can see pallet pallet contact surface is very limited. So the bonding between pallet pallet is a very, very small. So the bonding efficiency we talk about, interface bonding, if it too, if, if it, you are perfect bonded, you can do in this summation of the two systems, fuel and the class system summation. But if it's not a perfect bonding, you need to have a penalty. This is why we use experiments to define it. And the, the physical cohesion bonding the interface between the UO2 and the chromium uh, is expected to be fairly weak. And this is uh, not just speculation, it's on some observation. 
the majority of the intensive bonding is coming from the shear resistant capacity induced by clad radio compressor uh, residual stress and inherited from the hypermass penetrative fuel system. This gives you a better picture about it. Uh, you can see there is absolutely no gap. This is because we caught in some of the fuel you know, came out and we, we sliced it. Now that's after it's cooled down. From yeah, the reactor. Reactor. If it's in the reactor, those the field, the cold, you're going to get the cold. And the radio gap too. Radio gap closed. Will it close? Did, was that in that fuel? This part here, we expect it should be closed in the operating condition. How about the radio gap? Is that closed? Re you mean radio gap here? Yeah. This actually. Uh, depending on the fuel porosity of this region, normally we look at about 45 to 70 uh, hydrogen of fuel. Mm -hmm. And we expect it, it shouldn't see any gap. But I show you the next picture, you do see porosity, very high porosity. Mm -hmm. This is a picture showing this is a fuel, used fuel. And uh, this, I can review some EDM. And other study, this is most efficient gas product. And this you can see right after the you always had the crack at the interface. Yes, interface with the thing to be bound, but all we have a crack follow. So the functionality of this really doesn't really help. Mm -hmm. So this is a big question. Uh Abriva and several of my our colleagues tried to, to convince me that this have a lot of chemical cohesion. So the reason I wanted to torture. If you truly have a very good good bonding, when I talk this thing, the fuel you be act together. If not bond together, only clap. That's right. Okay, this is just some of the chemical evaluation we found. That this uh, the fuel matrix blue emission line. This is deposit as a crack tip. You can see a lot of fusion gas product there. This deposit. And this is from the uh, final element, just, we just two inch gauge section because our sample is six inch long, two inch in bed, and the gauge section is two inch. So we have about one to three four sample. So the funny condition we look at it, pellet pellet bomb, pellet clad bomb, or all the bomb, what the uh, results, this give you some perspective. I want to mention that even on the bond, Pellet can still take quite a bit of movement. Overall movement in the simulation is 6.25 Newton meter. If initially perfect bond, the fuel take more load. So clamp take free ride. So you have a perfect bond condition, the clamp will not really take much heating. Most beating go to the fuel. So the consequence of this, the two consequences. On the normal condition, the, we don't expect a clamp in effect at all. Got to take a look. But if under the bump shock condition, remember fuel pellets is much more rigid, so very low pressure toughness. Probably one tenth of the <coughs> top. So you have a bump, the shock wave, because at that point, fuel take more load. So the shock wave go to the fuel, they pop the fuel. When the fuel pop, you generate a new surface. New pressure surface. This is not a different type, and it, but the consequence is second explosion. If a fuel explodes inside, the shock wave transmits to outside. The consequence we haven't haven't been studied. It's one of my interests, you know, to see what come out. So here we're talking about if you debonding. Look at it. Initial perfect bond is 87 newton meter square rigidity. But if you, you already bond only 30 less, because this basically only clad left, fuel all gone. But you have a, we saw gap and with gap, also very difficult, different, very different response, you can tell. So PWR, most of the case, we assume, did not bond very well compared to PWR, because operate lower pressure, 1200 PSI, and the lower radiation premium, and many other issues. And this fuel generally a larger 
and the parent side is also different. So all this will be impact uh, your overall distribution between parent and the, and the client. This is the impact of river material. Uh, the plan, yes, yeah, they do have a good radiation resistance, but their, their design is smaller, so the stimulus is smaller because the rock was smaller. So this, this doesn't mean anything, but just to give you the same conclusion. If you do not have a good bonding agency between fuel and pallet, fuel do not support in your class. And the fuel pallets become a stress riser, stress concentration. Yeah. And uh, we, okay. this is another dynamic uh, space holder on the end. You vibrate under a certain condition, 0.5G. And uh, the spacer here use uh, nonlinear spring loading to couple them together. So uh, shock wave basic resistance is about 5 milliseconds and the 6G loading. So here we see even under the 5G harmonic loading, your, your rock layer already bang on your basketball. And uh, then at a certain time, all the coupling between few assemblies, they stop bumping to each other. So this is not good because this is local trending shock. And this is also showing at the third cycle, the class maximum stress already reached 80 KSI. Of course, much less than the, the fuel, the class can reach more than 100, 120, 140 KSI. But uh, this is, is a very high from fatigue perspective. You almost target your yield, yield range. It's so not good. Are these computation? Computation, purely computation. Uh, not and this is a 60 shot loading. You can see stress already shooting to 87. And the fuel pallets already 138. There's no way they can survive. So basically, you already generate new fresh interface. You will be popped. And the, this under the 10G significant. So basically, trend and shock we, we need to really avoid. Okay. And so now we're talking about the core. This is my approach. And I I'm a true believer of experimental because you, we saw baseline data, control data, the simulation can go any direction. But it's very difficult to get those baseline data. So the concept is very simple. Uh, this is my well, arm run. I use push pull. And initially my design is rise over here, but it's a join of here. Uh, found out you, you move the rod back in line with the joint, you increase your magnification and load transfer. So we found out very that we can reduce the size of instrument driver. So those all we finally nailed down to this. Push, pull. And when you push the curvature, you push it bend, right? Curvature comes like this. Neutral. And you pull curvature like this. So you have reverse pull bending. The first generation, we actually use a ver vertical because we, that time I don't have extra money to buy a electromagnetic motor. So I use hydraulic machine. But we found out the hydraulic machine a lot of times generate asymmetry mode, which is called the dead load by itself. And uh, also the bearing system, so uh, we finally designed turn into horizontal, horizontal mode. To some of the early development, we look into uh, whether displacement control or load control. And finally, we, we, we use low control because uh, a lot of linking mechanisms will not come into picture. But you use a displacement control, you chip in during the process of low transfer. So it's really very complicated. You need an additional uh, tool to, to analyze the data. But low control is simply just read. Okay. This basic here, the overall picture is that uh, you push and pull rod underneath here and the rod right here, and we have a, a rigid state to protect the rod and use the compliant layer is posse to provide protection, make sure you don't have pinching effect on your rod. And, and here we use a special uh, needle bearing, a lot of extra loading can be released. So you do not want to compress force into your rod. This, I, I can show the movie you know, see. This is a hospital operation. Hmm. This is moving. We operate over hundreds of million cycles already in hospital. This is 
manipulated. This is rock fell right in the middle. We're just lucky this one. But they always fail in the K section. This is that. And the really important thing I want to emphasize is the global response are curvature measurements. But a local stress concentration, no way you can measure it. For example, the maximum stress on the, not on the surface is underneath. And the curvature, local curvature, is about four times the global curvature. So those need to bear in mind. You deal with composite material, not a single isotropic material. So the stress concentration is very important. It cannot be neglected. And this is it showing the duplication of the test. You, you have a different sample loading and loading that pretty much follow each other. We're very surprised because then few we saw it to be very highly and, uh, random uh, defect distribution. But then even they, they look at the original system. This is showing the damage, uh, static bending test, one direction test, a lot of outside spell, outside spell. Um, this is tension size, this compression size seems to be okay. And this is underneath the palletary interface. Yeah, it felt always had an interface. This is just a register. You have a steady bending, low increase yield, and a low leading elastic. You have a, we divide by A, B, C, D region. A region we call EI1. Basically, at this point, we believe P1 cloud working together. So, and we do we do find a flash reactivity flash reactivity equal to moment divided by curvature, uh, depending on high value content, high value content. And it's, it's very content intuitive because normally you're thinking you have a hydrogen hydride, become more brittle, right? But your your reactivity go up, but actually opposite, going down. So a lot of things we're doing here, uh, people keep question, how come? But you know. People need to bear in mind because this is a composite structure material, not a single isotropic. So the common sense can apply. Yeah. And this is a, a north end of fuel. Again, you can see very clear fuel mark. So it's right dead on, on the interface. And this is side view. And you can see here the maximum stress, maximum tension compression side. There's a delamination. And the reason we say delamination, we need to look into more. But in the recording, the curvature really didn't change until after many they pop catastrophically. And the only reason we figured this is delamination did not cause crack growth. So overall, moment inertia, I didn't change. Young's module will not change very much. Also remember the, the radiate, the hydride ring on the outside, like a reinforcement much higher hydride content. If there's a bubble, if the rubber band bolt, they can shock up. So there's no delay at all. I can show you some of the results. This is the curvature measurement. Nothing really changed up. This is a fail of about 1.1 uh, ten R5 cycle. And the moment constant, moment range, so 15, about minus 15 Nm. And the curvature, you can see, and the positive curvature and negative curvature are different. Reason because on a tension cycle and compression cycle, your material response is different. And flash reactivity really not, nothing change until it pops. No warning. And this is we collected so called collected uh, as curve data. It's still consistent. Almost every one fell at the parallel parallel interface concentration. Mm -hmm. And as earlier I mentioned to you, the maximum flat curvature and the, the compressive flat curvature are different. Maximum curvature are higher. But this is the main curve called the curvature amplitude. You can see the two are different. So uh, again, I want to mention the most fatigue testing can you do in fatigue, the stress is, average, is uniform across the cross section. But you do flash bending is not. You like triangular. Very high stress gradient. In the middle of the zero, 
top. So you cannot compare flashes fatigue strength with your uniform tension compression center. Okay, so this needs to be very in mind. This would also apply for a heat exchanger tubes and tube vibration? Tube vibration. <laughs> Excuse me one second. Can I get a sense of how much bending it is? Is it is it something that you would observe kind of like this? It's very small. Very small. It's very small. So what does like one on your chart mean? The which one? This here, what does, this would be one something per meter? Uh, this one, one over meter is the curvature. So it, this actually is, this is a curvature unit, one over meter. Okay. Radius of curvature. Radius. Radius of curvature. You can see you invert become radius. Well, invert would be the radius yeah. of curvature. Yeah. That means the radius of curvature is actually a meter? Yeah, that's, 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 that's the smallest pain. Remember, you have 12 feet long rock. Okay. Uh, this one here is hydrogen below 550, above 700. You can see shift. I this plot generates by divide the two different groups. So hydrogen or hydride. Tom, you, you, you estimated this from the thickness Thick of the outside, outside layer yeah, yeah. on the outside. Outside. Assuming that all the hydrogen that went with that yeah. oxygen yeah. is in it. This data I got from Mike Bologna. <coughs> yeah. He measured basic oxide surface. He, 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 he compared the oxide with the hydrogen in it. That's right. The hydrogen measurement is a very difficult test. Yeah. Even the Shanghai change is coming to an area completely away. Yeah. So consensus is, is oxide thickness is more uniform as you use this. Okay, this one I want to show you. I don't I don't have much time. I mean, this one is just as a closing. This nose and fuel. This is the Mox fuel. Both are M5. This solid line. Is Dracoloid 4 H.P. Robinson fuel. See, normally M5 fuel considered a better fuel product than Dracoloid 4 because it's a higher reduction of this. But why they have shorter lifetime? Okay, and look at here, this point I put here. At a very low low, they seem to win again. They seem to last longer. And then in here, this is Mox fuel M5. This one, just an accident. My operator got some drop. He dropped one about two feet high. Then I said, what the heck? Drop one more time. So we drop twice. Then we do the test. They call the trending shock. Accumulated damage accelerated aging. From the two of same loading, slightly in increasing the curvature because of potential damage by trending shock. So they come back here. And so I want to next time I think it's important. So you can see all the curve here. There's two distinct failure magnets. On the low threshold region, I believe this part here was pressure toughness dependent property. This here are most a pallet clad interaction property. So at this region, turn the shock and push to this area. So in our SM curve, we can have an endurance limit here. We also can project to high, because in a higher loading rate, you have much shorter lifetime. So combined loading are very critical. This is our next critical step. The device only handle the quasi static conditions, or 500 to 10 hertz range. But we go to the higher rate loading, uh, you can use the air gun to generate drive. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you use only one rod right, for these measurements, fatty measurements, right? Six inch rod, each one. Each so how do you ex scale it up to 17? Um, 17. 17. 17. What? You the whole, the whole bundle. Oh. Because when, when you are transporting, you are not transporting one. Of course, you need to know individual how they behave. Yeah. One collecting individual information, 
and you can project accordingly the baseline product. For so, the so how do you scale it up? No, you don't need to scale up. Each one is independent. But you link them with your, your spatial, spatial grid. Remember, each one is independent. They need to survive in their own right. But then you can combine together and you can use computer simulation to generate your, your response. I, I think in this is the last one. I give you right, right now we meaning we try to overcome the budget constraint on you know, a very typical DOE project or an RD project. So come from one idea whether we can use surrogate rock to mimic irradiation environment. What is the important parameter we need to put in the front? For example, we can generate pre hydride not even radiate, which is a to hydride process. And we found out actually the green one actually was irradiated. This one we hear is HP Robinson. And with the pre-hydride, you can dictate the chitin content. You can mimic the irradiation property. This is in the infant state. You know, if this can prove work, you can do not get hostile, you can do it here. The last thing, and the bonding efficiency, how we cope with. See, this is irradiated, this is a baseline. <coughs> we can see drop, enduring limit, and shift of transition. So those things, I think, in university probably would be easier if we saw you really It's going to be very costly and safety issue. Okay. Um, so thank you for your attention. The samples that you actually got and cut apart and examined and everything, those must have been just very, relatively few. And I'm wondering how representative they are of the many years and different designs and everything. Not at all. <coughs> not at all. So, what I said earlier, spin few rock is case by case. Very difficult to generalize. Very difficult. But until we build a database, then right now we just explore. So, so if you took kind of this design that, that you showed on the rail car, would you be confident to ride the rail car with it, or would you be afraid that something would go wrong? But in the design, you have a pretty good shielding. So, but just uh, when you get to the target, how do you remove it? That's a different story. <laughs> but, but would you be willing to ride with it? No, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> Uh, now, the French and the English have been transporting spent fuel to the processing facilities for many years. Have they experienced any fuel rod failures, spent fuel rod failures in that time? Or yeah, I tried to collect information from vendors. Very difficult. They, they simply either tell you the repository, verbally they tell you, but you cannot cite. So if you have anybody, a reason document, I'd like to know. <laughs> Read it. Yeah. Do you expect that uh, fracture toughness that uh, reduces uh, with the high level? Yeah, because the high level. Even if you don't have the high level, high level because the, the, in the high level, in the, the perimeter of the field, the hardness is, is reduced, right? Hardness induced because the hydride ring form. Because the, 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 you always have oxygen hydride in the reactor environment. So outside building, the other side of the hydride coming to the structure. Very good. At this point, we can save any additional questions uh, for uh, the later discussion, but let's thank our speakers. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.